It is Thursday, January 20th. Welcome to the latest edition of Baseball Today. That's my man, T. Ploof. I'm Chris Rosen. Oh, we're super excited as a company. Yesterday, the doors opened. Everybody walked through except for like the two of us, Kelsey, Ashlyn, Moylan. We are very proud. In fact, I texted Jimmy and Jake yesterday because, I mean, really, if you think about it, this was an expansion team a couple of years ago. And now they've got this beautiful 6,000 square foot office smack dab in the middle of Manhattan. And I can't imagine that that's exactly what the guys, I'm I'm sure they had dreamt of it when they started doing this thing, but to actually walk off the elevator, I can't imagine how proud they are. It's, it's been cool. And it's been fun to be part of the ride. You know, I, I remember doing the first, when I got on talking baseball as a guest, I was using an iPad to like go back and forth. Jake was like in his kitchen. It was a mess, mm-hmm. an absolute mess. And uh, to see kind of the Bronx office, which was a big deal at the time, we were really stoked on that. That would seem like the same feeling almost, you know, like, hey, we got an office and now we're moving into Manhattan in a beautiful, you know, really what it is, Chris, it's not about having like this awesome, luxurious office. It's about providing the workspace for better content to be totally. created. So like oh, yeah. the stuff that's going to come out of there is going to be awesome. We're just, we're up in it. And I can't wait for, you know, all of our fans who've been with us this whole time to kind of see what we're, what we're about. No, it's no question. I mean, that's what it, it's about is you want people to be <clears throat> comfortable with where they're working so they can put out the best product and we'll continue to, to push that envelope. That's why it's really important that, that you guys give us feedback too. What is it you're searching for? What is it that we're not doing right? What is it that we are doing right? And as a company, we can take that. You know, we don't have all the answers, but we want to provide a bunch of them to you. So I just want to keep adding to my John Boy stockpile of jerseys. As long as they can promise me one a year, I'm happy. It's that simple. I think we can do that. Yeah. Okay. By the way, I think I need to change jerseys because I am sopped. I I just did my 45-minute old man elliptical right before I did this. So I apologize if I'm sweating profusely for those of you joining us on our YouTube channel. I apologize. So are you working out afterwards too? Uh, I don't, I'll take a nice walk this afternoon, a brisk walk. That's what we do it for guys my age. That's, that's the double workout of the day. All right, let's get it going. Uh, the biggest news I suppose is, uh, transactional in the sense of, Main free agent has new agent. That would be Carlos Correa has signed on with Scott Boris Corporation. Does that do anything for you? I mean, it changed. I think it changes things for sure. It kind of like seems like a match made in heaven, to be honest with you. I mean, Carlos was supposed to set the market. Now you got the guy who wants to set the market again. He just keeps setting the market every year. Right. I was going to say, you know, what this, what it really changes is Carlos is you know, desire probably to wait for a deal and maybe not start the season with the team because Boris has shown that he's willing to do that and can convince his clients uh, to do that. And then I realized, well, no, hey, hold on, we're to in a not, lockout. <laughs> so to, to not start the season, that usually doesn't happen. I and mean, B- Boris clients have been known to wait and wait and wait, but man, that's, not to start the season. That's oh, sure. That could happen. At least get into spring training and wait for a team. Wait for a team. They're more okay. inclined to wait than to sign and rush a deal that they don't want. I mean, Scott, I mean, that's kind of why he gets what he gets because teams know he'll hold true to that. Yeah, yeah I want to go b- circle back to your first point, which was a match made in heaven. I was shocked he wasn't with them to begin with. <laughs> Me too. Right? I mean, like, I thought for sure the minute that Carlos Correa became el- draft eligible that Scott Boris was going to be his guy. It just felt like that was the right fit all along. I suppose the biggest thing it changes is that whichever team he signs with is going to have to get an extra seat at the dais for the uh, press conference because Scott Boris is one of the agents that loves to get in front of that camera and loves to tell his side of the story. And listen, I mean, you can say whatever you want about him. If you're a baseball player, you want to be represented. He ain't bad. What's his tagline going to be? You know, he always comes up with a tagline for his players. Like yeah. he called some, you know, Swiss army knife, blah, blah, blah. I forget all, all of them, but there's always one. What do you think mm-hmm. Carlos Correa's tagline is going to be? That's a good one. I don't know. Leave your comments. Come up with one. We'll, uh, we'll sell it to Boris Corp and uh, we'll split they the profits with you. 
Huh? They'd pay for yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you know what? If we if we copyright copyright the phrase and we can dangle it in front of them, you know. We, we don't have a lot of information on why the switch happened. You know, Correa's statement was very short. You know, you can read into some things with WME, his agency that he left. You know, mm-hmm. they just kind of started their baseball program. Uh, there was some stuff with the PA. They were trying to or they right. have bought minor league teams and there was kind of a conflict of interest, although they said that that had nothing to do with the change. What I think happened, and this is me just really thinking about the situation this is his, this is his moment, right? This is Carlos's moment. Yes. He's worked his butt off to get here. And, and you want, you want to feel like you have somebody very, very capable of taking care of your business for you. And there's a possibility he didn't feel that way at WME. And he's like, you know what? Let's do it. I was reading some Astro fans chat boards yesterday message. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were like, well, now we're definitely not in this thing you know, because Boris doesn't like us or something like that. Well, I mean, if he did it based on where Scott Boris likes to place clients, then he'd end up in Washington. Like, that's where he has the best relationship from over the years, even though some of his guys have left. He used to put guys left and right there. But I don't think that's it. I think, you know, I'll even be curious to find out how much more he gets because of the move. We'll never know. We'll never right? know. We'll never know. We'll never know. All right, let's move on here. Uh, Baseball America's top 100 list just came out this week. Uh, Adley Rutschman, the fine catcher in the Baltimore Orioles organization, is the top prospect, which is kind of interesting because catchers, even when they come up, they're still only going to play, what, 130, 135 games behind the dish. But um, who's the guy that you're circling that says, I can't wait to see him in 2022? This kind of coincides with our, our guy, Carlos, here. Uh, I'm looking at a pair of Yankees prospects. I talked about Julio Rodriguez already, uh, I think, last episode. So yep. he's my guy. Like, I'm really excited to watch play. Yeah, good young outfielder we have this, in the Mariners organization. Yes. <clears throat> we have this interesting situation in New York, uh, in Yankee land, where everybody knows they need a shortstop. And Carlos Correa is out there, <laughs> and he's got – Scott Boris, who seemingly would like him to go to a big market, but you do have two shortstop prospects in the top 100. You have Peraza and you have Volpe. And I'm just curious, you know, are those guys who took massive steps in 2021, like, are they going to graduate in 2022? Is Peraza, if Correa is on a different team, is Peraza going to be the shortstop to start the year? Volpe's ranked ahead of him, but he's kind of a year younger and a little bit behind him in the, in the system. That's a big need for the Yankees. And if they can fill it with one of these guys and feel really comfortable, man, watch out. Because then all that money that they'd have to pay Correa can go to starting pitching, can go to relievers, really fill like other needs. And extending Aaron Judge. All of that. That should happen regardless. You have to keep him around. Right. But when you can get a premium position filled by a guy that you're paying the league minimum and have control over for six years, that opens up so much. And I think the Yankees really want that to happen. I see a lot of Yankees fans saying, well, I know we have these guys. Uh, we can still sign Correa. And you're right about that. They can still sign Correa and then see what happens with these guys. Move them off. Move Correa off. There's a lot of options. But I want to see if these guys, those two guys in particular, make that leap again. You made one leap in the minor leagues. Cool. Can you continue it and graduate all the way to the big leagues? The problem with going that route is what? Who's the, who's the most famous Yankee the last 40 years? Jeets. Right. Okay. So everybody will say, well, we've seen it before. 26 years ago, guy hits bats ninth, hits an opening day home run in Cleveland. We're off and running. And then they end up winning four titles in five seasons, right? With a, yes. a lifelong Yankee. So if you are not what Derek Jeter was, then you're, you're always going to be measured against the ghosts of Yankee past. And when you're a homegrown shortstop in that organization, you're only going to be measured against one guy from here on out. Fair or unfair, that's the problem with, with going the route you want to go. I, I mean, I understand like people are going to make that comparison. They already have, I'm sure, just because of the homegrown factor. But anybody that comes and plays shortstop is going to be measured against Jeter. That's just how it, that's just how it happens. You know, like even Carlos Correa is going to be measured against Jeter. Obviously he has a track record in the big leagues. That's, you know, these guys don't have, but mm. I don't, 
I think fans are smart enough and media, you know, the writers are smart enough to understand like Jeter was a generational player and it's like, yeah, there might be some comparisons, but to really actually think you're going to get the next Jeter with one of these guys, like, come on. Well, I agree. They can be really you. good in their own right, but this is a, a transcendent. I, I agree player. with you, but in the world we live in right now where there's more media than there's ever been before. That topic is going to be bounced around all the time. And by the way, if Correa signs up there, I think he's going to be more closely compared to A-Rod than he will to Jeter. Oh my just gosh. because of the I mean, situation. They're very similar. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I think that's inevitable if he ends up calling the Bronx home, which I don't think will happen, but it, I could be wrong. Uh, for me, the guy I'm keeping my eye on is the number three overall prospect, according to Baseball America. It's Bobby Witt Jr. Mm. And ever since he got drafted, uh, everybody's been all over him, and they said he is just a can't-miss guy. Interestingly enough, the next guest on the Chris Rose rotation, it'll be released next Monday, is Whit, Whit Merrifield of the Kansas City Royals. And, and so I asked him about Bobby Witt Jr. He told me something that one of his coaches said about Witt Jr. that I almost fell out of my chair. The guy he compared him to. I was like, what? He said, now, hold on. I didn't say that. One of, my compo- one of my coaches compared Bobby Witt Jr. to this guy. He said, listen, I have seen him, and so I can understand why that is. Because if you look at what he's done in, in the minor leagues, last year nearly a 950 OPS when he split the season between double and triple A. Hit 33 homers, drove in almost 100 runs, had almost 30 steals. I mean, he is uber athletic. He's got massive pop. He's got a pedigree where his dad played in the big leagues, albeit a different position. His dad was a pitcher but he understands the lifestyle. So none of that is going to scare him. So he is going to be ready. And when he gets up here, I'm just telling you, I don't know if the team's going to take off because they got a lot of young guys that are seemingly, I don't know if it's a repeat of 2014, 2015, where that young core all came up together. They struggled a little bit together and then they took off. But man, oh man, I'm excited to see what he's got. Did you name the player he's compared to? Or are you saving that for the show? What do you, what do you think I am? A rookie? Come on. Oh, I want to know now. I guess I got to tune in. That's what you do, huh? Uh, I can give you a hint or two. It's fine. Keep it to the, keep it to the rotation. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, It'll be coming I out on say. Monday, but it, it was really good. And by the way, Whit, I don't want to get too far off track, but Whit Merrifield was really good. He, sure, uh, yeah. he gave us a ton of good stuff. Like, you know, his dad was a, a career minor leaguer. Okay. Amazing story, actually. He got called up to the Pirates for like one day. And his, he was in the starting lineup and his game got rained out and he <sighs> never got to play in the majors. Can you imagine that? That's crazy. I, I have a, uh, some similar stories with a couple buddies of mine. But I mean, uh, shout out Witt because Witt's an awesome guy. And then Witt Merrifield, Bobby Witt. Junior, on the other hand, I can't wait to see him either because, yeah, people have been talking about this guy for a long time. Mm -hmm. And when you watch highlights, you know, they're always minor league highlights, so grainy footage, and we get some spring training stuff, you know. uh, But he looks the part. He looks like he can do everything on the baseball field, which is kind of cool because you don't – I feel like a lot of guys specialize in things now, and and every once in a while you get a guy that can kind of just do it all. Do it all. uh, Like that. And, Chris – I like to mention this to people. I got a lot of Bobby Witt Jr. rookie cards. So, Ooh. Bobby, you Teddy some needs special ones. some help. Let's go, man. Come on. Hell yes. Good for you. Um, he is the highest ranked. He's ranked number three, according to Baseball America. He's, he's the highest ranked Royals prospect since Alex Gordon, number two overall in 2007. And Alex Gordon had a really, really solid career. Alex, solid. Gordon, Alex Gordon, third base prospect. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, George Brett went into his house after the draft and was like, dude, come on, be me. And Gordon was like, no, I'll just be a gold glove left field. <laughs> well, yeah. Remember, he came, he failed at third base and he, had to learn, and he had to learn how to be an outfielder. And he turned into a gold glove outfielder and became, you know, one of the leaders of that team. And, you know, lifelong Royal. Good career for him. Can I tell you a funny story about that? Just quick. Sure can. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm buddies with Ryan Braun who also yes, came right. up as a third baseman. Yes, he did. Also failed miserably as a third baseman. Uh-huh. <laughs> when he told me when he moved to the outfield, he said, man, he's like, you seen these left fielders? He's like, I'm automatically going to be the best or the most athletic left fielder in baseball. He's like, I'm going <laughs> to win all these gold gloves. Didn't turn out that way for him. No. Like it did, Alex. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. 
the, the uh, it's funny because Ryan Braun, obviously, listen, a star studded career with some missteps along the way. But mm-hmm. the one thing I will always remember about him was him trying to get the inside the park home run and oh, the God. stumble between third and home. It's and pretty funny for whatever reason, Reggie Miller was in the crowd that day mm-hmm. was at the game and his reactions when Braun is just like the old drunk stumble out of the bar. Look where the, everything is just flailing all over the place. They're so. good. That's his name. That's his neighbor. Oh yeah. So right. In Malibu. They're really yeah. good friends. So like he was there watching him and that happened. Like that's this class. That's a classic moment. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, MLB rumors came out with an interesting take. Uh, which red starting pitcher is most likely to get traded at some point before the season? Castillo, Gray, Molly, which one is on the way? And where's the perfect landing spot? You know, it's funny. We always talk about the Reds wanting to trade everyone. And I'm wondering why the Reds want to trade everyone. Like, well, I, I don't. They're cutting payroll right now. I know We've they're cutting that. payroll, but they already have the payroll. So I know like, they're trying to scale it back. But when you're in this this NL central division, like with some really good players. And like, these are like three good starters. Like you have like a formula for success. Mm -hmm. And I believe, tell me if I'm wrong. I think all three of these guys have two years of control left. Well, yeah, gray. Yes. Gray is a a year plus an option, but the other guys have multiple years of control. It's, it, it seems to me, like maybe you go give it a shot at the beginning of the year and see where you end up. And then you could still trade the guys. They're still worth, they have an extra, still an extra year and a half of service time or uh, no, but it just me. doesn't feel that way between, I mean, Castellanos isn't coming back and he was, he was the linchpin of their offense. They traded Tucker Barnhart because they didn't want to pay him what? Seven and a half million to be they a really got a good guy coming up though for Tucker. Okay. I, I get it. It just seems but I mean, weird to me. I mean, it, it's strictly financial. It's bullshit. If this is strictly financial, it's bullshit. That's not your freaking job if you own a sports team. It's not. Well, it can be. It's a question of how you want to run your organization. It's that simple. I mean, if you want to go out and try and win, I mean, listen, the the Reds. Think about what you just said. If you want to go out and try and win, of course, every team should want to go out and try and win. That's 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 the overarching problem we have right now in our sport. But you know that that's not not accurate. I'm just saying they're closer than a lot of other teams. They're much closer than a lot of other teams. Hell, yes, they are. There's no question. But would it surprise me if they trade one of these guys? Would it surprise me if they trade Jesse Winker at some point? No, it wouldn't. It just Please, they better not. But I'm just saying, I'm not telling them to do that. I'm saying, Chris, would you be shocked if you saw Jesse Winker's name on the transaction line when we get back to, to wheeling and dealing? The answer is no. So with all that being said, do you think that one of the, cause if not, I've got an answer. If you need a little more time, I don't need a little more time. Okay. Look, Sonny Gray is the one that they cost the most money. Mm-hmm. I think that I have a landing spot for him. You asked me about a landing spot. If Sonny does get traded, it's funny because he's a guy that kind of has the stuff. And it's like, if you can get him right, He's an excellent pitcher. We saw him go to the Yankees. They tried to make him throw a slider too often. Mm-hmm. And he he's he wanted the slider to be a waste pitch, like a strikeout pitch, and they wanted him to throw it for a strike more often. Didn't work out. All right, hold on. Before you go, because I wanted Sonny Gray too. How about I'll count down three, two, one. We'll each say we'll each say the name of the team. I have two teams, but I'm gonna go with my favorite team. All right, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, Dodgers. Tampa. Whoa. Really? Yeah, because look, I want to hear about why she said a Dodgers shot. I mean, I think I know, but it was either going to be the Mariners or the Dodgers for me, or Mariners or the Rays for me. Uh, Mariners are kind of like, that'd be fun, you know, yes. getting back in the AOS. They, need, they still need pitching to, to get over the hump. Uh, the Rays, I think, makes a lot of sense because he is cost controlled. They love that for two years. And like I said, when you unlock his stuff, he's a premier pitcher and i think they'll they're better suited to do that than a lot of different organizations i don't know it just seems like a fun fit like they would do some fun stuff with sunny they would he wouldn't need to go super deep into ball games because they don't really believe in that mm-hmm. um so yeah he fits on a lot of teams but i would like to see him in a raise uniform and then I, you I, I like to see him in a reds uniform more than anything but right. if he does get traded raise yeah 
Uh, and Mariners, that's interesting. We know that the Rays, they have arms for days. And the Mariners, I think, have five guys in the top 100, according to Baseball America. So they've got – and they've got plenty of young pitching that's supposed to start arriving this year, right? They had Logan Gilbert last year, and then we'll see if the rest of the guys come with them. Uh, for me, I had Dodgers because they – like, I think it's kind of the forgotten story. Yeah. The Dodgers – starting rotation is not what it has been in seasons past, right? Yep. Where you Scherzer left. We don't know what's going to happen with Kershaw. Dustin May's not coming back soon. So there are a lot of like vacancy signs in that starting rotation right now. Bowers you know, gone. Got- I mean, think about all the things, all the pitchers they had to start last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it makes sense. And, you know, everybody will say, well, didn't they trade a ton for Scherzer and Turner? And yes, but they still, they're one of the best farm systems in baseball. There is still plenty of talent to be had there. And if the Reds are just interested in getting rid of salaries, you don't have to move as much in terms of prospect. Just saying. Yeah, maybe the Dodgers take on a, a couple of them. Oh, you mean like, oh, uh, wh- yeah. What, what, what the Dodgers would do is they would take like a Suarez with, sunny and eat the contract something like that i don't know if they'll go that far but that's something that the reds will you know want probably more than prospects if i had to guess yeah but where do you put suarez you don't you don't put him i don't know i i and i love suarez i think he get you know he's had a couple down years here but yeah yeah okay he's had some really good years too don't forget people i know i know guys can bounce back i mean i love yeah. it when guys bounce back because this is a hard as hell sport and just because you go in a, the crapper one or two seasons particularly the shortened season i didn't really even count that doesn't mean you can't bounce back you can so i just realized you're wearing a red's hat there's a method to my madness on this show that's a weird red hat. What kind of red hat is. is that? It's it's a spring training hat from several years ago. Um, my guy Dave Eichinger always used to send me All lists. Right. All right. And so you look good. You look good. Yeah, I'm just. I told you, I'm just trying not to sweat all over the place. Okay. Okay. Uh, last thing is really not so much a question, but I think applauding a couple of guys for doing great, great things. And let's start with one of the Cincinnati Reds, Jonathan India, who's the reigning National League Rookie of the Year. Uh, I was following him on social media and saw that he was going to the Bengals playoff game last weekend. They ended up getting their first playoff win in more than three decades. So that was a cool moment for that city. On top of that, uh, there was a young man named Patrick Kinman. He's 18 years old. Uh, He's autistic. He loves baseball, but he can't play it. He went up to Jonathan. He introduced himself and Jonathan followed him on social media, followed him on Instagram. He said, listen, DM me. I'm going to get you tickets. He said, you want them for opening day? I'm going to take care of you. And for me, it just showed the power of, you know, what opening your heart can do, particularly when you're a celebrity. Sometimes you live in a bubble and you don't realize how one little act of kindness, which takes so little in the grand scheme of things, can change somebody's life like Patrick. And I just I want to applaud Jonathan. I want to applaud Patrick. For having the courage to go up to a big leaguer and saying, hey, man, I'm a fan. Just want to let you know. Yeah, it's really cool. And you really hit it there saying you can. And this is for all the ball players out there. You can make someone's day very easily. Now, I know, like, for instance, we get a lot of autograph people at the hotel. Don't worry about those guys. You don't have to make them happy. You don't have to make their day because they don't really care. Now, if there's kids out there, sign for the kids. You can make their day. That's what I always used to do. Hey, I want to clarify you. something. Explain why you're bypassing the adult uh, autograph seeker. Uh, most of them are just collectors, and you'll see your stuff on eBay. And that's the truth. Okay. okay? You know, every once in a while, you'll get some guys with, you know, personal collections. It's hard to differentiate between those guys. Got to be honest with you. So, what I would do is any kids here? Okay. Bring them forward. I'll sign for the kids. And that changes everything. If you got a yep. ball you're warming up in BP with, don't throw it back into the bucket. Who cares? You know how many balls we can get? Throw one into the stands. I've said that forever. Major League Baseball, I know they want to sell all these things back to the fans. We should be giving balls away all throughout the game. Like, make, like when you see a young fan walk away from a game with a baseball, what, do you, what, what does their face look like? Just pure joy, Incredible. dude. And they'll right. talk about that for years to come. Jonathan went over the top here, you know, leaving tickets. Although, guys, that's pretty easy, too. You can't do that all the time. You do have to pay for these tickets, but you know, 
I would say every single big leaguer should do this once a year, at least. Yep. You're right. You will, you, like you said, you will, not, you will maybe not change their life, but you'll make a huge impact on their life just by being nice to them. Um, Pretty easy. I, I was so impressed by what Patrick did that I reached out to him. I noticed he followed me on Twitter. So I followed him back and I DM'd him and I just said, Hey, listen, dude, I'm proud of you. I thought it was awesome. You and your exchange with Jonathan India. I said, you're going to enjoy the heck out of that baseball game whenever it happens. And I just, all I wanted to say is you're awesome. And he wrote me back a couple minutes later. He said, this is so wild. He's like, I've followed you for years. And he goes, it's just made, it made my day that you even reached out. I was like, that was pretty cool. Yeah, You're a big deal, Chris. No, no, no. But, but what I'm saying is, is that I wanted to, I wanted to do it because I just wanted to tell him how neat it was because there was no other way I could get to him. But thanks to social media, there is a way. And I said, dude, just keep doing your thing, man. Keep enjoying life. Keep smiling. And he mentioned how much he loves John Boy Media. So I thought that was kind of neat, too. You, you, um, you definitely have to keep a big perspective, you know, as a ball player. And again, I'm kind of talking to the, the guys right now. Mm hmm. Think about when you were young and going to a game, if you got an autograph. I mean, I, I, I remember going and getting autographs. Got Todd Hollinsworth's autograph. You know, um, we used to go down and see Brad Fulmer hit at Northridge Little League, and he didn't even sign anything for me, but, like, just him, like, acknowledging me. Like, this is a pro ball player acknowledging me. I'll never forget it. And I played in the, in the show. Like, but those moments stick with you. So mm -hmm. you got to keep that perspective because sometimes you get real locked in and you're working on your career, and that's okay. But every once in a while, take a step back, realize the kind of power that you have, and, and use it for good. Totally. It's, um, it's well said. Well said, my friend. Thank you. Uh, I also want to applaud Alex Bregman and his wife, Reagan. Uh, great little story that um, happened out of Texas. Apparently, he was at a toy drive, and uh, this woman took an Uber, to go to the toy drive and Alex's wife, Reagan was helping her with all the toys back to the Uber. And they got talking a little bit and she told her story, a uh, 39 year old mother of three who had just lost custody of her children, lost her house, lost her car, was having a real tough time in life. And so Alex and his wife and another couple got her a car, helped pay rent for six months help get her back on her feet. And she was just talking about, um, you know, this woman, Carolina uh, Bordelon, I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly, was just saying that the, the Bregmans are her angels. And uh, listen, I don't have time today for the little comments about Alex Bregman and the Houston Astros. And don't leave that bullshit today. That's not what this is about. Okay. It's about giving some, uh, some praise to people who did something that is life-changing. And this isn't the only thing he's done. We got to applaud nope. him on this, but he's been hit charity wise. Bregman has been doing a lot. Go Sorry. check it out. Go follow him on social media and check it out. I don't think he's doing this to make up for anything with the Astro situation. He's doing it because it's the right thing to do. And I think he's a good person. Yep. So, you know, uh, we got to applaud a couple of big leaguers. So that's really cool. I'm glad we're shining a light on, uh, on these two moments instead of talking about the lockout. Hell yes. They, these guys deserve and, this a lot. There's a gazillion stories like this, right? I mean, yeah. you, we go back to what the little thing you said for baseball players to just take a second out of their day, whether it's give people tickets, like the number of players who play catch with kids in the stands, it, whether it's in awesome. between innings, we've seen Aaron judge do it. We've seen Max Scherzer do it during BP. We saw Andrew McCutcheon a couple of years ago. I think when he, he was playing, I think he was still with the pirates and in San Diego, he, gave his wristbands to these kids who could not believe it afterward. Like they went nuts. Just those little things, you know, not every big leaguer will or can afford to pay six months rent on a place for people. They can't do it. But man, mm -hmm. if you could touch one life like that during your career, awesome. I applaud you. I think it's great. Yes, sir. One last thing. All you, ball players can do out there and i would do this before every single game and it costs you nothing and it's, it puts a smile on kids face get you a handful of bubble gum mm. get you a couple bags of seeds and go before and toss them up to the kids they go nuts for mm -hmm. something like that yeah 
now. So it's just the small acts of kindness that go a long way. Yes. There you go. Now I feel like doing something good today. Let's do it. You yeah. look great. No. Okay. Average. All right. Uh, anything coming up on uh, John Boy Media we should know about? <laughs> We recorded the. We tried to record a talking baseball yesterday. Uh, first day at the office, the tech monster was out. Uh, so I yeah. think Jimmy and Jake did finish it. I was like really not a part of it. It just was not working out. Uh, so we got that coming out. We're recording an interview later today. We you know we okay. don't usually do interviews on talking baseball, but uh, this is one of my buddies, and he asked to come on, and so we'll see how it goes. I love to hear that. Love to hear that. Uh, AJ Przinsky episode is out for your consumption mm-hmm. of the Rose Rotation. As I mentioned, Whit Merrifield, the all-star for the Kansas City Royals. We cover it all next week. There's really a bunch of good stuff, uh, including whether or not he expects to get traded in the offseason, how he almost quit before he got to the big leagues. Uh, That was a fascinating story. I mean, he told us about how there were times he thought he should have been called up, and he he was, like, ready to take it off, take his cleats off, be done with it. You know, we get a lot of those stories on the Rose rotation, but he wasn't wasn't like some 20-year-old. He was like a 26 year old and hadn't gotten there yet. That's the time where guys really start thinking about it. They haven't made it. So that's awesome. Yep. Fun. Uh, As always, it's good hanging out with you, my man. We'll be seeing each other. Can't really, you know, talk about it too much, but. Yeah. We we better get out of here before we start. We get ourselves in trouble with the bosses. We don't want to do that. Uh, We will see you next time here on Baseball Today. Thanks for tuning in, everybody.